Good evening, afternoon I should say. And welcome to our afternoon service. Legacy Baptist Church in my live dining room, I guess it is, dining room. And you can see that the leaves are changing behind me. Isn't that amazing? In my house, the leaves are changing. Uh, with some help from the interior decorators in my house. <laughs> I hope you've had a great afternoon. It has definitely been... My window's right straight ahead of me. That's why I'm looking that way. Uh, it's definitely been a wet, rainy, coolish, darkish, overcast day. A perfect day to uh, get your blankets and have a snooze. And I definitely did that on my couch this afternoon, and it was glorious. It was wonderful. I had a hard time uh, shaking up the cobwebs, shall we say, but... At any rate, it's uh, another day the Lord's given to us, another day to give him the praise and to uh, glorify him. And if you got your Bibles, turn to Daniel chapter 11. We're going to get there in a second. So I got a true or false questions. I got a few of them here. So uh, we've been in Daniel chapter 11 for quite some time now. It's a very integral book, uh, chapter for prophecy and stuff. So we've been there for a little bit. Um True, true or false question is this. Was Darius the king when Daniel received the prophecy? True or false? Was Darius the king when Daniel received the prophecy? This prophecy in chapter 11. True or false? Let's see if we can get it. Good afternoon. I see a few people saying good afternoon, good evening, and good afternoon to you. Glad you're with us. Was Darius the king when Daniel received the prophecy? True or false? You can put a T, put an F. What's it going to be? 50-50 if you don't know. Good afternoon. Hello, hello. See the Smiths on there? Anybody? Are we feeling a little the sluggish like the weather? No one quite knows for sure. Oh, I got someone. Got a couple willing to put themselves out there. All right, the answer is true. It is true. Darius was the king when Daniel received the prophecy. Yep. Uh, the Jews, number two. True or false? The Jews in captivity, were able to return to Jerusalem after 70 years. True or false? The Jews in captivity, they're taken by the Babylonians, were able to return to Jerusalem after 70 years. True or false? What say ye then? True or false? The Jews in captivity were able to return to Jerusalem after 70 years. See a few coming in. And the answer is true. It is. Uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 talks about it. Daniel, that's when Daniel discovered the 70 years. And not everyone, that, not all the Jews that were taken into captivity went back to Jerusalem. But after 70 years, they were able to go back if they so desired. The king uh, was able to, or wrote a decree that said they could go. Uh, and then the last one, true or false? Did Daniel return to Jerusalem after the 70 years? Did Daniel return to Jerusalem after the 70 years? Did Daniel return to Jerusalem after he discovered it, reading through Jeremiah and stuff? Did he go back with the group to Jerusalem?
see a couple answers there. And we would say false. We don't have any verse or scriptural basis that Daniel went back. He stayed in Babylon. That's what we know. Uh, so it's false. All right. So Daniel chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 36. And I hope you got pen and paper handy. I'm going to give you a lot of other uh, verses that go along with what I'm saying tonight. So they are supporting verses to verify what we teach, uh, what we believe, and that's important for you. So uh, you, you've probably met people who take one or two verses and lift them way out of context, and then you use that to build uh, a doctrine or some sort of a theory or whatever. Uh, so I can give you lots of ex extra verses just to kind of help build this so you know it. So I hope you got pen and paper. You can write them down. And... You can always refer back to this video too, but uh, it's good for you to know. All right, so Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 36. <clears throat> and a king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself about, above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that is determined shall be. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall uh, he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at that time, the end of the, shall the, king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots with horsemen with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over and he shall enter also into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall escape out of his hand even Edom and Moab and chief of the children of Ammon and he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and, and the land of Egypt shall not escape but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and over silver and over the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and Ethiopians shall be at his side, or at his steps, sorry. Uh, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. We'll go into verse or chapter 12 in just a bit as well. But before we go any further, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for another day given to us. And Lord, I pray you encourage our hearts as we uh, look at the things to be, the future things, your prophecy uh, written, uh, used by Daniel so many years ago. And yet again, showing us that you are in control and you are God. Lord, I pray you encourage our hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. So we looked the last time at Daniel up to verse 35, and now from verse 36 on, it shifts. There's a, it's a, a huge shift. It was a shift from the kings and rulers, Ptolemy and uh, you know, different other ones, Antiochus and things, uh, those kings, and we talked about all the fights and things that took place. Uh, now it changes even from Antiochus. And now goes to the Antichrist. And Antichrist is like the foreshadow of that, uh, of that last dictator. And we, now we move into, uh, like the latter part of verse 35 says, even to the time of the end. Now we're moving into the time of the end. Uh, verses 36 to the end of the chapter and then into chapter 12 describe for us things that take place during the tribulation. Uh, both the Old Testament and New Testament teach us that there would be a tribulation, that something drastic, horrible would happen. And uh, in our study, we seen, we look at the 70 weeks of Daniel. We're getting actually really close to being finished the book of Daniel now. And we see that uh, the Lord God Almighty has a whole plan put together uh, for the end of time, for the prophecies to take place. Uh, so the rapture has taken place. A peace treaty is signed. With Israel to last for seven years and the Antichrist is going to be ahead of that 10 nation confederacy we looked at that we saw that back in chapter 7 okay the tribulation 
period will conclude with the return of Christ and in the confinement of Antichrist and Satan and placed in the lake fire. That's in Revelation chapter 19. So this is what I'm talking about. Just take a few notes. So chapter 7 is the Antichrist and the ten-nation confederacy he leads against uh, Israel. <clears throat> and in chapter 19, uh, the latter part is when they're taken. Christ returns, Antichrist and Satan are off to the lake of fire. So verses 36 to 39 really give us some details about this Antichrist, okay? Uh, he is horrible and he's wicked, there's no doubt. But when he steps into the world seen as such, that character is not necessarily prevalent. Um, he begins his time as leader, as the man of peace. Now just keep, in, keep this in context. This is not mentioned in this verse, but we know the rapture takes place. So the church is removed, and the Holy Spirit, that can, the restrainer, is removed. All right? And this world, I mean, as bad as we see it out here right now, is, is going to look pretty, really good compared to what it will be. Uh, so there's going to be all kinds of problems. So this, he steps forward as a man of peace, a man of initiative to bring ro world peace. Uh, he solves the problem of Israel with her, her enemies, and he established himself, obviously he's energized by uh, the devil, but he established himself as a masterful politician. And over time, his wicked designs are revealed. And to the midpoint of the treaty, then he sets himself up as, I'm God. And that's found for us in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Uh, for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even under the consummation, and that determined shall be uh, poured upon the desolation. Uh, he's without a doubt arrogant, and everything he does is for his own exaltation. That is it. He doesn't care about anybody else. It's all about him. He's the epitome of pride, okay? And he will view himself as a success, and he will expect other people to treat him as such. And his... His end is the end of tribulation, at the tribulation time, and Christ returns. And then he's at without any hope. That's found in verse number 45. Uh, and yet none shall help him. Okay. Uh, we see some things about him uh, in, in these verses. Verse 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. So I've read a number of things about prophecy, revelation, Daniel. So there's some scholars who say that this means he must be a Jew, the God of his fathers. Uh, they, they say that because of that statement, and they say because they don't believe the nation of Israel would ever sign a peace treaty, like this size of peace treaty with a Gentile. Now, it's possible that he could be, I'm not going to argue you on that, but there's no scripture that supports that view that he's absolutely a Jewish individual. Is it possible? Absolutely. But there's no uh, scripture that says that he is of the house of Israel or he's a Jewish man or whatever. There's nothing like that. Uh, we do know 100% that he's an atheist. Okay. Actually, I don't know if atheist is right around. He does believe there's a God. He thinks he's a God. So atheist is probably not the best word, but... He establishes everything to exalt himself. That's because that's who he is. I am God. Uh, and then a little, little later on in this portion of verse 37, nor the desire of women. Uh, so some have said that um, this indicates, scholars suggest that he is a homosexual. He might be. I'm not, I'm not going to fight you over it because it's not worth fighting over. But I really think, studying it this man, is that he's not intoxicated with uh, sexual desire or pleasure. Rather, his pursuit is personal power and glory. That's what it's all about for him. All right, that's, that's what he's after. Uh, that's what he wants. He's going to reject all traditions and all normal relationships. He's going to reject all religions. So just stop for a second and think about that one. Uh, all religions, Hinduism, Islam, uh, all religions, Shintoism, Bintu, uh, you know, whatever it is. He's not going to have anything, Confucian, you know, no, none of that. He's not going to have any of that to deal with. 
he thinks he is God. And so he's going to be opposed to all religion. Now he's particularly, okay, so in general, he's all against religion. And he's particularly against the Jewish religion, Judaism. He, he is opposed to that. His God, he, he talks about his might. That's what he wants. He wants might. He wants power, military strength. Uh, that's what he is. Uh, verse 38, but his estate shall be honored. Shall he honor the God of forces? That, he, this is what he's all about. Okay, so I, if someone says to you that those other things, Jewish homosexuality could be, uh, again, it's not worth fighting over. So it's, it's definitely not worth saying, well, I can't fellowship with you because you believe that. No, uh, this is my own personal opinion that his God, his pursuit, his pleasure is power. And he's going to do everything he can to get that power. Nothing's going to stand in his way. All right. Uh, so down in verse chapter 12, verse number one, and at that time... At, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time they, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone shall be found written in the book. So at this juncture now, we have reached the middle of the tribulation. When the Antichrist breaks his covenant with Israel and he seizes the temple. And he sets himself up as truly as the world's dictator. I am God. And that's the abomination of desolation that takes place. And it's mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, uh, 11, 31. And when that takes place, I mean, it was, it's bad before. There is a lot of bad stuff takes place before that happens. But the last three and a half years are going to be totally horrific. All right, uh, Matthew 24, 21 says, For he shall, uh, for th then shall be a great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world, uh, to this time, nor ever shall be. It's going to be bad. Uh, during this time, the Antichrist will war against the Jewish people. Uh, the Lord will protect them. He will care for them. I'm going to read you a couple of verses here from uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of the great eagle. The woman is... Israel, okay, just for context, okay, the woman is Israel, and she might fly to the wilderness and to her place where she'll be nourished for a time, a times, and a half a time, three and a half, okay, three and a half years, uh, from the face of the serpent. Serpent is Satan, and those with him, the dragon as well, that's verse uh, 17, the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the, which keep the commandments of God, and have testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, so the remnant, because there is going to be great bloodshed, there will be much death and destruction uh, in that time. So the people who live in Israel, Jewish people, and as well as the 144,000 that are sealed by God to preach the gospel, they, they will all be living at this time. And God it will protect them. Uh, he is going to absolutely hold his word with the Jewish people. Uh those individuals who try to make Israel or sort of make church Israel, that kind of replacement theology, they have a massive problem with this because the, the church is long gone. Even in their the mid-tribbers, those who believe that halfway through tribulation uh, were taken out, which I don't believe. But if, they, if that was true, then this problem with Revelation 12 is huge because who's the woman then? This is absolutely all the time the Jewish people who are being persecuted – uh, by Satan and and those energized by him. Ooh, can't even say words tonight. Uh, so that that takes place there. Uh, back in chapter eleven, verse forty to forty three, I read read for you about uh, war from the north and south, uh, come from the east as well. Uh, once the Antichrist moves into Israel and sets up his image and declares himself to be the ruler and god of this world. That's going to cause problems. Remember, he hates all religions, so uh, the Hindus are not going to be excited about that. Islamic individuals are not going to, no, that's not right. Uh, you know, there's going to be lots of religions who oppose that, and then just people in particular will oppose. He's not going to get congratulation letters from all across the world. There, Those people will rise up against him, kings from the north, the south, uh, and they'll come. They'll try to oppose him. There's a great victory. He acquires great wealth. As a result of that, uh, and you know, you know, he's energized even more. He's, he's accomplished a great military victory. 
So that's verses 40, 43. And then verse 44, but tidings of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy in order to make away many. His designs are to totally, totally destroy. That's his designs. Uh, throughout the last three and a half years of the tribulation, nations will submit to the rule of Antichrist. There's no doubt. But there will be many who will oppose him, no matter that he's energized uh, by the Satan okay, and his, and, and his rule. Uh, men are men. Men are still sinners. Men have pride. They, they, they will not submit to him. Okay, and uh, that's not to say all of them, no, but there's going to be some. And this, these verses here in verse 44 describe for us, force from the east will come. And they will come together and meet uh, in the valley of Megiddo. And we know that as the Battle of Armageddon. And Armageddon means the mountain of Megiddo. Uh, here is where the battle will take place. A huge, massive army from the east comes. And they actually confederate with the Antichrist when the Son of God appears. You can find that in Matthew chapter 24, verses 19 to 30. So that's Matthew 24, verse 19 to 30. They will confederate together and oppose Christ. Uh, they, they might not like each other, but they hate Christ. And they're going to band together and try to stand against Christ. Well, that is useless. It's not going to work. They will not be able to stand. There will not be a fight like we would think a fight. Okay, they, Christ speaks and the battle is done. That, that's how truly marvelous and great our God is. He speaks and the battle's done. Okay, and uh, hey, for us as individual believers here today, as we're watching this, we will be with Christ as he returns. And we'll be with the, the great uh, army of Christ that returns to earth. Uh, we will follow him. Okay, we will, we will see this. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's a, a hard thing to comprehend, to process sometimes. But this is exactly what the Word of God tells us. And at the end of that battle, uh, Satan, Antichrist, false prophet will be taken captive and cast into the lake of fire. That's in Revelation chapter uh, 19 and Zechariah chapter 12. All those things are mentioned. And actually, Zechariah 14 talks about it as well. Uh, so... Now, Daniel doesn't reveal this truth, but the prophecy of Zechariah, uh, Zechariah promises the nation of Israel will see their Messiah as he comes from heaven and recognize him and repent of their sin and trust him and the nation will be cleansed. That's it found in Zechariah chapter 12. And Christ will stand on the Mount of Olives. Um, it actually will break. Uh, Revelation, or sorry, uh, Zechariah 14, 4 and Acts chapter 1 talk about that. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Zechariah 14 9 says that. And he will establish his kingdom for a thousand years. And that's found in Revelation chapter 20. So the, the, the kingdom of Christ in that chapter of Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 7 really, that's the big part of it. Um, we see six times in that chapter the word a thousand years. Let me read for you here in Daniel chapter 12 verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to the everlasting life, and some to the shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall rise, shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So, um, again, six times the kingdom uh, is mentioned, uh, the thousand years. Uh, that's the length of Christ's kingdom here on earth. So Christians who believe the Old Testament prophecies of a literal kingdom here on earth are called millennialists. I am a millennialist, uh, not a millennial millennialist, okay? Uh, from the word of God. And that's what our church teaches. That's the doctrine of our church. We believe in a millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Then there's those uh, who do not believe that. They're all millennialists. Uh, they spiritualize the Old Testament prophecies and the Jews and then try to apply them to the church. I don't believe that. I think that's not biblical. Uh, I believe through Scripture that God has a plan from the beginning to the end for the Jewish people. Uh, so there's no doubt we can take applications from some of those Old Testament prophecies for the nation of Israel, but the interpretation 
of the literal kingdom and him ruling his reigning people. That's absolutely true. It's it's the Jewish people that he's going to come back, reinstating things. Uh, so that's found in Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah 4, Isaiah 11. Uh, they're all for Jewish people. Now, as believers, we'll be there. There's absolutely no way. We're not discounted or anything, but God has a special plan for the Jewish people. Um, the father promised the kingdom to his son, Psalm chapter 2, Luke chapter 1. And without doubt, God keeps his promises. He never fails. And Jesus taught his disciples that the kingdom was coming too. He told them, hey, there's a kingdom coming. You need to work. Uh, and they did ask, when will that happen? Now, the, the disciples thought it would be soon. They really wanted it to be soon to throw off the Romans. Uh, but he told them not to worry about the timing, but rather to serve. And uh, hey, for us as believers today, we know that that's coming. It should be a motivation again for us to be the believers and the Christians that we ought to be. Now, the resurrection is referred to here, or inferred, alluded to in chapter, or verse number two. The resurrection is not a patch-up job of the old body, okay? It's a new and glorious body that we're given in the resurrection. When Jesus Christ returns to the call, in the air to call the church home, the rapture, the dead in Christ will rise first, then the loving believers will be caught up uh, to be with him in the Lord. And uh, it's great detail given about that in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. That's the next event on the Lord's perfect calendar. Uh, I get a little weary, and especially with everything that's going on right now. We hear, oh, this is the next thing on God's timetable, blah, blah. Listen, the next thing that we know on God's timetable is the rapture. There's no doubt there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Yes, we all know that, but that's been going on for eons, okay? But the next major time signature on the calendar of God is, is, the, is the rapture. That's what's next. And when that takes place, then the tribulation. And when the Lord returns to earth at the end of tribulation, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, he'll bring his people with him and we'll share in that victory and that glory. Again, as believers, we'll be there. Individuals uh, will still be able to get saved during the tribulation. I don't want anyone to think that you can't get saved or anything. Absolutely. That's what the 144,000 Jews are doing. They're prophesying or preaching, I should say, about Christ. And uh, they're trying to win people for the Lord. Um, but it's going to be a time like no other. It's going to be terribly difficult. It's going to be horrific. And those who make that choice for Christ, it's a massive choice. Like, it's going to be death for a lot when they make that choice. And we, we read of... Um, persecutions against Christians and things of the past, they will pale, and they were horrible, and but they will pale compared to what will take place to Christians in the tribulation. Uh, many, many Christians will die uh, during the tribulation. And then there will be people who will die during the tribulation uh, without trusting Christ, no faith, and they will be judged accordingly. Uh, Revelation ch chapter 20, verses 4 and 6 and eleven fifteen 15, talk about that. Uh, if you've been born once, you can die twice. But if you've been born again through, you know, Jesus Christ, faith in Christ, you only die once. I, th I read that this week and I thought that was a pretty neat little statement. Uh, you, you, so true. You can, you can die twice. Die in an earthly sense and then eternally separate death. Uh, but if we accept Christ as Savior, you only die once. Uh, so that that's a uh, neat. Well, you don't even, might not even die if the Lord returns and He calls the church home, the rapture. We don't even taste death then. So uh, it might be a chance to not even taste it at all. Uh, so verse three alludes to the rewards to the believer, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Um, you know, just in the context of the tribulation saints, I know sometimes right now it's definitely with our fear and things with COVID, uh, our outreach is a bit different, our testifying might be a bit different, maybe a lot more digital or whatever, <coughs> excuse me. But for someone to have a faithful witness during a tribulation, that's pretty much a death sentence. Like, they, they will not be tolerated. Uh, it's it's going to be such a different time. Um, 
and, and I would suggest to everyone, come to know Christ. Don't, don't try to mess around with that. That's horrible. Uh, know Christ now. Uh, but the Lord will uh, reward those who faithfully testify for him during that time. And he's going he's gonna to reward us today who we won't live through the tribulation. We'll be in heaven. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, but you know, we will be judged for our work as well. Romans chapter 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 talk about it. Uh, so we need to make sure that uh, as individual believers today, we are doing what's right. The rapture, the tribulation, the rise of the Antichrist, the horrible wars, the death, they're yet to come. Just as the Lord is yet to come to establish his kingdom for a thousand years. Uh, it's a truly amazing, I mean, I talked about heaven this morning in, in our service, and that's yet to come. Uh, as believers, we have some really amazing blessings before us. And we're blessed now. Uh, we, we really don't deserve what we're getting. I mean, the Lord is so good to us. And uh, what a future we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and it should be a motivating factor for us to, to serve him the best that we can. And I trust this has been a help to you and you understand better of the future things, the prophecies. We have one more sermon in Daniel. We're almost done. And then we're going to look into Revelation. Now, we have um, back earlier in the spring, I uh, did a series Sunday morning on the seven churches. So we're not going to go over those again. Uh, but on our Sunday nights, we'll start in chapter one and we'll skip two and three, chapter two and three. That's where the churches are. But we'll... So this, we'll, we'll go through the book uh, in the kind of same sort of format as we've done with Daniel. And so then you'll have Daniel and Revelation, two pivotal books for prophecy. Then again, just to help you so you would be equipped to know what is what and what's not. Uh, because there's a lot of um, taking things out of context, trying to fit this verse into somebody's mold and things. Uh, the reality is we need to know what God's word says and declare that and be truthful to it. All right, just a couple of little reminders. Podcast Tuesday and Thursday, and I misspoke this morning. I said that this Thursday I would have one on about Halloween. I do have one, but it's the following week. I got my weeks mixed up. Uh, so that's coming, uh, but uh, please do listen Tuesday and Thursday. They're all ready to go, uh, but it's the following week. We have a three-episode thing about Halloween, and I would encourage you to listen. I would encourage you to listen even before that one. Uh, but uh, get on board with that. Wednesday night is uh, our Bible study, Zoom meeting. Um, we'll be getting out the information about that so you know how to what, what time and, or the, the Zoom meeting ID and things uh, so you can be there. Um, and then Saturday morning at 8.30, uh, we'll look forward to our uh, Facebook devotion. And then just a reminder for next week, it's just Sunday morning. Uh, we'll be on live and things of that nature, Facebook Live. Uh, but we'll just have Sunday morning service next week. We won't have anything in the evening, just so you can mark it off on your calendar. All right. Well, folks, I hope you have a great evening. If you go for a walk, don't get too wet. Uh, bundle up nice and warm. And uh, have a wonderful week. And uh, keep exploring the Word and looking to Jesus. Take care for now.